Unit 3 Scarcity, Work and Choice New technologies raise the productivity of labor as you saw in Unit 1. In this unit we talk about how would that affect living standards, how would that affect the free time and working hours chosen by individuals. The graph shows data for three countries, US, France, and the Netherlands. Annual hours worked are shown on the vertical axis and living standards as measured by GDP per capita on the horizontal axis. In the 1870s to 1900, GDP per capita is around 1500 and number of hours worked is about 3000 per year. It is clear that living standards have greatly increased since 1870 in each of the three countries but there are disparities in free time and income across countries. Since the 1950s, annual hours work continued to fall to about 1,400 hours per year in France and the Netherlands as GDP per capita increased due to smaller work week and more vacation time enjoyed by them, but leveled off in the U.S. at about 2,000 hours per year. In this graph, GDP per capita is measured on the vertical axis and average annual hours of free time per worker on the horizontal axis. You can see that the higher income countries towards the top of the graph seem to have more free time, but there are also some striking differences between them. For example, the Netherlands and the US have similar levels of income, but Dutch workers have much more free time and the U.S. and Turkey have similar amounts of free time but a large difference in income. The Dutch workers enjoy a smaller work week and more vacation time compared to the American workers with similar GDP per capita or living standards. The Turkish workers on the other hand choose the same amount of free time even though their standard of living is much lower. These different choices regarding work and free time can be explained based on preferences for work and free time in different countries and over time as well as using institutional differences, political differences and cultural differences or social preferences. Scarcity and choice, key concepts in economics. In this chapter we talk about choices when things are scarce such as time or resources or capital or labor then trade-offs have to be made. We especially focus on labor, which refers to how many hours of work someone will choose over free time as GDP per capita has increased over time due to the technological and capitalist revolution. We start thinking about this with grades and study hours. Students choose how many hours to study, which affects their grade, GPA. We assume a positive relationship between GPA and the number of hours study, other things being equal or ceteris paribus. When the study environment is held constant and the GPA compared for students with low study time and high study time, in each case, the students studying more have higher GPA. Production function. What we just saw in terms of study hours and grades can be seen in terms of a production function. Production functions show how inputs, example labor, translate into outputs, example goods and services, holding other factors constant, example production environment. In this example, input is the hours of study per day and output is the grade on the final exam. If we study zero hours, the grade will be zero. If we study one hour, the grade will be 20. If we study two hours, the grade will be 33. For three hours of study, the grade will be 42. With 12 hours, grade will be 86. The grade increases with more study hours till you get to 15 hours where the grade reaches a maximum of 90. After which, if you study for 16 or 17 or more hours, the grade remains at 90. So there is no point in studying any more than 15 hours. What can production functions tell us? 
One thing is this idea of marginal product. When you hear the term marginal, think of one more. So marginal product means by how much the grade changes with one more hour of study. The marginal product is equal to the slope of the production function. Since the production function is a curve, to get its slope at a point, we would need calculus. However, we can see how much the grade changes for each additional hour of study. So for example, at 4 hours of study, we can see that the grade is 50. And for 5 hours of study, the grade is 57. So the marginal product is 57 take away 50, which is 7. If we study 10 hours, the grade is 81. If we study 11 hours, the grade is 84. So marginal product is 3, the difference between 84 and 81. The marginal product gets smaller as the number of hours of study increases. We can also see the average product. The average product is given by the slope of the line from the origin, 0, 0, to whichever point we are interested in. So at 4 hours of study, the grade is 50. 50 divided by 4 gives rise over run and is equal to 12 and a half. At 5, it would be 57 divided by 5, which is 11.4. The average product at 10 hours is the rise 81 over the run, which is 10, so 8.1. So like the marginal product, average product is also falling. Graphing the marginal product and average product curves. The marginal product is shown by the blue line and the average product curve by the red line. You can see they both start off at the same point because the first hour of study gives 20 extra points, so marginal product is 20, and slope of the line from the origin to the point on the production function at one hour of study is 20 divided by 1 is also 20, which is the average product. For the second hour of study, marginal product is 13, going from 20 to 33. For the third hour, it is 9, going from 33 to 42. For the fourth hour, it is 8 and then 7, so the blue line is falling. This demonstrates the idea of diminishing marginal product, that for each extra hour of study, the grade increases by smaller and smaller points as the number of hours of study increases. The average product is falling too, and that makes sense because if the marginal product is falling and below average product, then the average product has to fall because we are adding a smaller amount than the previous average. So you can see at 2 hours of study, grade is 33. So average product is 33 divided by 2, which is 16.5. At 3 hours of study, grade is 42. Average product is 42 divided by 3, which is 14. Thus average product is also falling. After study hours get to 15, marginal product stays at 0 or stops changing while the average product continues to fall because you are adding zero marginal benefit for each extra hour of study. This is something common we will see with production functions. We will assume diminishing marginal product, which means average product is falling as well. Indifference curves show all combinations of goods that give the same utility satisfaction. The marginal rate of substitution is the slope of the indifference curve and represents the trade-offs that an individual faces. The production function tells us how we can take an input, in this case, hours of study, and turn it into output, in this case, final grade. But it does not tell us how we feel about those inputs and outputs. In order to think about the choice we are going to make, we have to think about preferences. In order to think about preferences, we have to think about trade-offs. Every extra hour of studying is an hour that we lose of free time, even though it gives us a fine, higher final grade. So the way we think of preferences when we have a simple too-good model is in terms of indifference curves. What are the combinations of goods, in this case free time and final grade, between which we are indifferent? We graph this by putting one good on each axis. Final grade growing from 0 to 100 on the vertical axis and hours of free time per day on the horizontal axis going from 0 to 24. At 0, 0, where we have 0 for a final grade and 0 for f free time is the worst possible outcome. As we move away from the origin, 
at a point where we could have 100 for a final grade and 24 hours of free time would be the best possible outcome. So indifference curve that are further away from the origin are more preferable to the ones close to it. Let us look at the points on an indifference curve such as A, E, H, and D between which we are indifferent. At point A, we have 84 for a final grade and 15 hours of free time. At E, 75 for a grade and 16 hours of free time. At H, the final grade is 54 with 19 hours of free time. And at D, the final grade is 50 with 20 hours of free time. By looking at these points, we can think of the marginal rate of substitution. How much are we willing to sacrifice for an extra hour of free time? When we go from point A to E, we are willing to give up 9 points going from 84 to a 75 on the final grade. This tells us the rate at which we are willing to substitute our final grade for an extra hour of free time. Remember, marginal means one more. At H, the marginal rate of substitution is 4. You can see that the marginal rate of substitution is falling as we move down the curve. Think of this in terms of the trade-off you are willing to make at each point on the curve. As you have more free time and a lesser final grade, for still another hour of free time, you are willing to give up less and less of the final grade points. Now we are going to use these preferences as they show up in the indifference curve to figure out what is the optimal choice for this person. Properties of indifference curves. Indifference curves are downward sloping. Marginal rate of substitution decreases as you move down an indifference curve. Two indifference curves cannot cross, since that would mean one combination of the two goods giving the individuals two different levels of satisfaction or utility. Indifference curve that is further away from the origin represents higher level of utility. Opportunity cost. When we're thinking about choices, we have to think about this concept of opportunity cost. Choices are limited by constraints or scarcity. We cannot have everything we want, such as 100 on the final grade and 24 hours of free time. We have to be willing to trade off some free time for a higher grade. The opportunity cost of an action is the net benefit of the next best alternative action. One common example in the Principles of Economics courses is the opportunity cost of attending college. That includes not only the financial costs such as tuition, books, room and board, but also the time that it takes to go to college where you could be working or have free time to do whatever you could be doing instead of going to college. So we must compare actions based on economic cost, which includes not only the monetary cost, but also the subjective costs. Economic cost equals monetary costs, example transport, plus subjective costs, example effort of work. Opportunity cost example. If the benefit from an action exceeds the economic cost, you receive an economic rent from choosing it. Here you have the choice between attending a concert at a theater or going to a concert in the park. The concert at the park is free, whereas concert at the theater costs $25. So if you go to the concert, you pay $25 for the ticket, plus you don't get to go to the park concert, which you value at $15. The economic cost of going to the theater is equal to the financial cost or out-of-pocket cost of $25, plus the opportunity cost of $15. This is the same in both cases, whether you put a high value on the theater choice or a low value. The high value enjoyment of the theater concert is worth $50. In this case, you will find it worthwhile to go to the concert at the theater because you get $50 worth of benefit while your economic cost is only $40. In this case, your economic rent is positive equal to $10. Economic rent is the difference between how much you value something over how much you have to give up. In the lower value scenario, enjoyment is worth $35 while economic cost is $40. Economic rent is negative $5. Thus, 
you should choose not to go to the concert at the theater, but enjoy the free concert in the park. The Feasible Frontier shows the maximum output grade that can be achieved with a given amount of input study hours. However, here, instead of hours of study on the horizontal axis, we are plotting free time while on the vertical axis, we still have final exam mark. This way, we have goods on both axes that we desire. It shows the highest final grade Alexei can achieve given the amount of free time he takes. With 24 hours of free time, his grade would be zero. By having less free time, Alexei can achieve a higher grade. The feasible frontier is the same as the production function, just flipped on the horizontal axis, its mirror image. The feasible frontier gives us combinations of the two goods that are feasible. Points A, E, C, and F show maximum amount of the two goods that are possible. As you move along points on the frontier, more of one good means less of the other. At point D, which is inside the feasible frontier, where we have a grade of 70 and 10 hours of free time, we could do much better. We could get more of one good 17 hours of free time with the same grade of 70 or a grade of 90 with the same hours of free time, 10 hours. Thus, any point such as D, which is inside the feasible frontier, is feasible but not efficient or optimal because we are not using all of our resources to the best of our ability. Point B, on the other hand, shows a combination of 20 hours of free time and a grade of 70. It looks very good but is not feasible. It is outside of our feasible frontier. We don't want point D and we can't be at point B. The other thing we can see from the feasible frontier is the concept of marginal rate of transformation, which tells us the rate at which one extra hour of free time will transform into lower final grade or how much free time must be given up to earn a higher grade. At point e, A, the student has 13 hours of free time and a grade of 84. At point E, the student has 14 hours of free time and a grade of 81. Between points A and E, the student has one more hour of free time but three less points on the grade. The marginal rate of transformation is the slope of the feasible frontier and represents the trade-offs that an individual faces. Between points A and E, the slope of the feasible frontier between A and E is minus 3. Between C and F, the slope of the feasible frontier is minus 7 because the grade falls from 57 to 50 as free time increases from 19 to 20. The slope of the feasible frontier increases, ignore the minus sign, as we move down the curve. For one more hour of free time, when the student already has a lot of it, as at point C compared to point A, more points on the grade must be given up compared to point A. You are learning decision making under scarcity, a key concept in economics. Example of constrained choice problem. Model of how individuals choose given their preferences and the constraints they face when the things they value are scarce. Studying example, free time and exam score are scarce because they are both goods, each with an opportunity cost. Marginal rate of transformation, MRT, is the slope of feasible frontier which shows the trade-off that Alexei has to make in order to enjoy one more or less hour of free time in terms of the points that must be given up or gained as a result of that choice. MRT increases as we move down the feasible frontier. Marginal rate of substitution is the slope of the indifference curve showing the trade-off the student is willing to make. MRS decreases as we move down the indifference curve. Faced with the feasible frontier, the student wants to reach the highest indifference curve. 
optimal decision making faced with the feasible frontier the student wants to reach the highest indifference curve the utility maximizing choice is where the amount of one good the individual is willing to trade off for the other good mrs equals the actual trade off between the two goods mrt mrs equals mrt this is the point on the graph where the slope of the feasible frontier is equal to the slope of the indifference curve the utility maximizing choice is given by point e where the student is enjoying 19 hours of free time and has a grade of 57 at points a b c or d the student will not be maximizing the total utility since they would be on a lower indifference curve than at point e at these points the slope of the feasible frontier is not equal to the slope of the indifference curve for example at point a the mrt is greater than the mrs meaning that the opportunity cost of an extra hour is more than what they are willing to make we know mrt will decrease as we move up along the feasible frontier while the mrs will increase as we move up the indifference curve this indicates the student will be better off choosing few hours of free time than at point a at point e the slope of the two curves is equal since they are tangent to each other at b and d the number of points alexa is willing to trade for an hour of free time mrs is greater than the opportunity cost of that hour mrt so he prefers to increase his free time another example of production function and feasible frontier grain production so far we have considered a student's choice between studying and free time we now apply our model of constrained choice to angela a self sufficient farmer who chooses how many hours to work we assume that angela produces grain to eat and does not sell it to anyone else if she produces too little grain she will starve we can look at the trade off between grain produced and free time that angela faces the graph on the left shows the production function and the one on the right shows the feasible frontier angela faces the production function pf shows angela can produce 64 quantity of grain with 12 hours of work per day at point b the feasible frontier shows the production function flipped because on the horizontal axis we now measure free time so we see the maximum grain angela can produce while choosing 12 hours of free time is 64 consider the effect of technological change on the production function and the feasible frontier with technological change in the form of new and improved quality of seed or harvesters angela can now produce 74 quantity of grain with 12 hours of work at point c the whole production function shifts upward as a result of the technological change technological change also means angela can produce the original amount 64 with fewer hours of work 8 as shown by point d on the new curve technological change causes the feasible frontier sh to shift out showing that 64 quantity of grain is possible while enjoying 16 hours of free time or with the same amount of free time as before 12 much larger quantity of grain can be produced 74 as shown by point c technological change shifts the production function upwards and expands the feasible frontier optimal decision making what happens when the feasible frontier changes technological progress makes it feasible to both consume more and have more free time with shift of the feasible frontier outwards angela can be on a higher indifference curve which was unattainable before at point e the new equilibrium given the constraint and angela's preferences she ends up enjoying more of free time and a greater quantity of grain it is important to realize that this is just one possible result had we drawn the indifference curves or the frontier differently the trade offs angela faces would have been different we can say that the improvement in technology definitely makes it feasible to both consume more grain and have more free time but whether angela will choose to have more of both depends on her preferences between these two goods and her willingness to substitute one for the other to understand why 
Remember that technological change makes the production functions deeper. It increases Angela's marginal product of labor. This means that the opportunity cost of free time is higher, giving her a greater incentive to work. But also, now that she can have more grain for each amount of free time, she may be more willing to give up some grain for more free time, that is, reduce her hours of work. These two effects of technological progress work in opposite directions. Choice of free time slash consumption depends on relative preferences and willingness to substitute one good for another. Income and substitution effects. You saw that hockey stick growth caused GDP per capita to increase in many countries. We want to understand the effect of an increase in average income on people's choice of hours of work or free time. Example, effective increase in wages on working hours. Budget constraints are the feasible frontiers for consumption choices. Suppose the wage rate was $15 per hour, then the table on the slide shows the maximum consumption someone could enjoy based on the number of hours they decided to work. Remember, hours of free time is simply 24 minus the number of hours worked. The budget constraint shows the maximum of the two goods, consumption and free time, that the person is limited to. This is the feasible frontier facing the individual. The graph shows that with 24 hours of free time, income and hence consumption will be zero. With every hour of work, free time goes down by one hour and consumption goes up by 15. With eight hours of free time or 16 hours of work, the income and consumption possible is 15 times 16 equal to 240, which is the vertical intercept here. The slope of the budget constraint, rise over run, is equal to the wage. So the MRT is constant and equal to the wage here. The optimal choice is where the slope of the indifference curve, MRS, equals the wage, MRT, at point A. This individual will choose 18 hours of free time with $90 of income and consumption. Two important effects. Weight changes affect the slope of the budget constraint, MRT. Consider a wage increase. It will have two effects. Your total earnings increase, holding working hours fixed, income effect. The opportunity cost of free time increases, substitution effect. Let us understand each effect in turn. Income effect, the change in optimal choice when income changes, keeping opportunity costs, the budget constraint slope fixed. To separate income effect from substitution effect, we first allow for a change in income due to one time raise without a change in the wage rate. This would cause the budget constraint to shift out without a change in the slope since wage rate has not changed. A wage increase gives more income per hour worked, incentive to decrease working hours or increased free time. It will cause individual to move from point A to B, showing more free time is chosen and more consumption is also possible. Point B is on higher indifference curve. Substitution effect. To understand substitution effect, we allow the wage rate to change. This changes the slope of the budget constraint. Substitution effect, the change in optimal choice when the opportunity cost changes at the new level of utility. A wage increase raises the opportunity cost of free time, incentive to increase hours worked or decrease free time. With the new budget constraint, which is steeper, consumer chooses point D on the higher indifference curve, showing reduction in number of hours of free time. Overall effect on labor choice. Overall effect equal income effect plus substitution effect. Income effect on work hours is negative. Income effect on free time is positive. Substitution effect on work hours is positive. 
substitution effect on free time is negative. Which effect dominates depends on individual preferences and determines whether as a result of increase in wage a person will choose more free time or less free time. Application to technological change. Working hours. Differences over time. Income and substitution effects can explain trends in working hours over time. Example, in the U.S., the income effect dominated the substitution effect, so consumption and free time both increased between 1900 and 2013. We can interpret the change between 1900 and 2013 in daily free time and goods per day for employees in the U.S. using our model. The solid lines show the feasible sets for free time and goods in 1900 and 2013 where the slope of each budget constraint is the real wage. The shift from A to C is the income effect of the wage rise, which on its own would cause U.S. workers to take more free time. Notice that the slope of the budget constraint does not change as it shifts out to show higher income. The rise in the opportunity cost of free time caused U.S. workers to choose D rather than C with less free time. Graphically, we isolated the substitution effect by allowing the slope of the budget constraint to change while keeping the consumer on the higher indifference curve reached because of higher income. The overall effect of the wage rise depends on the sum of the income and substitution effects. In this case, the income effect is bigger, so with the higher wage, U.S. workers took more free time as well as more goods at point D compared to point A. Working hours, cross-country differences. Differences in working hours can be explained by preferences that differ across countries. The solid lines show the feasible sets of free time and goods for the five countries. Point Q is the intersection of indifference curves for the U.S. and South Korea. Notice that the indifference curves for the U.S. and for South Korea cross. This means that South Koreans and Americans must have different preferences. At this point, Americans are willing to give up more units of daily goods for an hour of free time than South Koreans. We see that average free time in Mexico and South Korea were virtually the same, although the wage was much higher in South Korea than in Mexico. South Koreans, Americans, and Dutch people have about as much to spend per day, but South Koreans have three hours less of free time. Other explanations. Differences in culture, norms, politics, legal limits on hours, social preferences, example keeping up with the Joneses. The combined political, cultural, and economic influences on our choices may produce some surprising trends. In the Economist in Action video, Juliet Shore, a sociologist and economist who has written about the paradox that many of the world's wealthiest people are working more despite gains in technology, asks what this means for our quality of life and for the environment. Here is the link, https colon forward slash forward slash YouTube forward slash F R L H L O N E W T eight Is this a good model? It is not realistic. People don't actually do MRS and MRT calculations. Most people cannot choose their working hours, but it is still a good approximation. Over time, people learn what combination of working hours and free time suits them best. Working hours can change due to culture and politics, indirect choice. People can choose which jobs to apply for. It helps us understand real world phenomena. Preferences and income and substitution effects can explain differences in working hours across countries and over time. Summary 
This chapter introduces you to many important concepts in economics such as scarcity, choice, opportunity cost, trade-offs, and constrained optimization. 1. We learnt a simple model of decision-making under scarcity. Indifference curves represent preferences. Feasible frontier represents choice constraints. Utility maximizing choice is where MRS equals MRT. 2. Use model to explain effect of technological change on labor choices. We have used a model of decision making under scarcity to analyze choices of hours of work and understand why working hours have fallen over the last century. Overall effect equals income effect plus substitution effect. Limitations of model. It is a very simple model.